just wondered if we could start with some team news, please. How is Ben, me, and uh, any other issues over the last few days, maybe? Um, we're not too bad with other issues. Ben's going to be touch and go, I think, um, to whether he makes it and obviously the risk and reward of that scenario. So we'll wait and see on more news tomorrow on him. Um, it is it is more of a knock, which is favourable rather than a twist. Um, but it's it's whether he makes it in time, I think, and whether it can settle down in time. What's the um, the movement like since the Leicester loss? I think I'm right in saying it was it was just your second defeat in eight games. Came on the back of some good performances, some good results. But you said yourself there were aspects of the performance you weren't too happy with. So what's the reaction been the past few days? No, the mood's been good. I mean, the reaction's been good. You know, it's the first time I think I've referenced ever than a first half against Manchester United when they were where they were strong. It must be said, um, and we came back into that game, but. Other than that, it's the first time we've come off of, of, of a real good performance consistency. Uh, we weren't we weren't far off. I mean, we, we gave away two sloppy goals in the end and that cost us, but the general performance wasn't far off. It just wasn't there wasn't as um, as clear focus and as clear mindedness as what we've shown in other uh, performances recently. So, you know, we're we're a constant work in progress. I always say that, but we are. Um, so, you know, I've got to be careful of my demand because the the players are giving a lot here, uh, and they'll continue to do so. I'm sure of that. You um, obviously played Chelsea on Saturday. Um, big story developing at Stamford Bridge, as you know. Do you think that's something that you could maybe take advantage of, that the ownership situation might be in the Chelsea players' minds? They seem to struggle a bit at Luton last night. Um, I doubt it. I mean, they've still got some top players. I, I didn't think they overly struggled at Luton. I thought Luton gave a very good performance. And, and Chelsea, as they do, they find big moments because they've got big players. Um you know, I think I think anything that does affect them, if it does affect them, um, you know, is is helpful. But I I, I don't really see that they suddenly become a, a bad team or anything. They've got some fine players, that's for sure. Um, so I'm thinking they're still going to be a solid outfit as a minimum. Um, you know, and even in a, what people have described as an indifferent run, I think they've only lost one in ten. So uh, you know, I think that's a fair reflection on the fact they're still a powerful side. I just wondered if you, you had a view on Abramovich's decision to sell the club. I mean, do you think it's the right call in the circumstances? I have I've no clue of the, the, the links, the, the whys and wherefores of their club and the situation. Um, that'll be down to him and his decision. And just a final one from me. I mean, there's a bit of a cliche that games for teams close to the bottom of the table against the traditional big six sides, you know, they kind of don't decide whether teams go down or not, but... Do you think with 13 games left that really you need to take points from every game or is it games like this won't really affect your season? It's not about they won't affect them. I mean, uh, uh, you know, last season we went off to Liverpool and won there and, it, and it, you know, it's a big effect because it's not only the three points to feel and stuff like that. It is just uh, statistically more difficult to beat these sides and I think that's shown across many seasons in the Premier League when, you know, teams outside of the, the sort of powerful six, eight clubs, statistically it's rare that they have a better record against them sort of sides than they do against others in the division. So I think there's just a balanced view of that side of things. But... We've shown before, um, and, and even recently, with a with a very strong uh, performance and a good win against Tottenham, that it can be done. Um, you do have to be at the top of your performance levels. I know that, so we've got to really focus on getting to that um, and taking on the game with that kind of. I suppose there is an added edge of free free thinking because of the fact that most people outside of your own group think that it's you know it's too much for you when you take these teams on. But we don't think that inside of our camp. You know, we think we can challenge and can be uh, competitive in this division against whoever we play, wherever we play them. Um, so that's our mentality going into this game. But it is a big challenge, of course, because they are, as I said, they're, they're still a very fine uh, group of players. Cheers, Sean. Good luck at the weekend. Thank you. <clears throat> Cheers, Sean. PLP. Hi, Sean. Hi. Uh, I watched on Tuesday and it was, it, it was a real Burnley night, wasn't it? You know, team played really well. You described them as sloppy goals, but it, it must be pretty frustrating for you know for you by the time you get home when you look back on that night. I think all losses are. You know, as a manager, you always feel that all losses can be prevented. Um, obviously, with rational thought and analysis afterwards, sometimes you hold your hands up. You know, been beaten by teams who have been too strong for us. You know, various times during our time in the Premier League, I just felt that the other night was one that kind of. 
we added to the fact that it went away from us. We didn't play with the, the clarity we have been playing and we gave away two soft situations. Uh, Nick Pope had played very well uh, and made some big saves for us. And we actually conceded from two situations that we didn't need to. Um, if a couple of the other ones had gone in against Pope, I'd have helped Mianza, but we, we kind of didn't do the things that we normally do to prevent two situations which led to their goals, albeit the, the last one we were you know, pushing forward to try and get something from the game. Um, so that was my main bugbear. I just felt that we were on such a good performance uh, level over so many games that I, I just felt the energy was right, uh, which it was actually statistically we were strong again physically. Um, but the detail wasn't right and we've done well with that over the previous seven games so we have to remind ourselves of how important that is and, and, and the other night Tuesday night does remind you of that because you need to get the details right all of the time in the Premier League so you get punished I was watching Bal Bankhurst and where, where Woodsy might have had eight years earning his trade at the likes of West Brom Birmingham Leicester he's come into the Premier League do you, do you think he's finding out what he's let himself in for now? Uh, no, I think he's enjoying himself. Um, I think he's he's enjoying the challenge. He's, he's grasped what we're trying to achieve here. Um, and he's currently played a big part in activating on that and, and trying to change uh, the flow of traffic for us. I think he's done well so far. He has a chance on the, the other night, but he's in there um, on the far post to score, which which might have made a difference to the outcome. Uh, but no, he's, he's, he's done very, very well and he continues to work very hard for the team. Um, colleague mentioned earlier on about Chelsea and Abramovich. How, obviously, you've, you've been around football all the time that he's been there. How, how do you evaluate the Abramovich years? I mean, 19 years, 19 trophies, but possibly also in that time bought a cancel culture that let the likes of Kevin De Bruyne and Mo Salah slip through the net, a, 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 you know, a club that needs instant success. I don't imagine that he's running that club on every instance and every day-to-day -day moment. I would imagine there's a lot of opinions go into a running of a club like that. I think the very start of what you said, 19 tribes in 19 years, I don't think that's a bad start. I think he'd be reasonably happy with that. Um, all the other whys and wherefores are in-house situations. There's, I can't comment on whether players leave or, or, or stay there. Um, they're in-house situations. There's many reasons why players come and go to a football club. Um, but overall, I think when you look at the structure of the club, the size of the club, what it was and what it is, then I think, I don't know, but I imagine that most Chelsea fans would be pretty happy with the, the work that's been done there and certainly the amount of money that's been put in to try and get the club to where it is now as, a, as a, certainly a very, very recognised um, part of the Premier League and of world football. And, you know, I, I think that on that score, um, then I think most Chelsea fans would appreciate what's gone on over them years. Um, but you'd have to ask them, but that's what it seems to me. Cheers, Sean. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, Sean. All right, Beardy. I'm just going to have a quick swig, mate. Oh, sorry. You have a swig. You Thanks take your much. time. Done. Thank you. <clears throat> Not a problem. Um, on Ben Me, the centre half position, and me and Tarkovsky obviously have such an established partnership. With Collins coming in and making an impression, and you've still got Kevin Long there as well, are you kind of blessed in the centre-half department? Is there less worry about Ben potentially not making it now than perhaps there would have been early in, earlier in his time with the club? Well, I think all it is is that Kevin Long, we know, um, seasoned pro, looks after himself. He's always been ready and willing. Um, he didn't play early on in the season. He'd had a pretty long-term injury and he'd, he'd had hardly any football coming back. Uh, whereas Nathan Collins had come in and done a full pre-season and was fully fit and sharp, excuse me, I think Nathan's more than justified his inclusion in the team when he's played uh, with his performances. And he came into an awkward performance at the night because it's not easy when you're coming on as a centre-half and he did very well for the most part. Um, so I certainly, uh, I think that's added to our, our strength and our depth in them positions. But uh, like I say, I certainly don't, on the other hand, discount Kevin Long. He's been very unlucky with the timing of his injury uh, because early season we would have probably gone with Long if he'd, excuse me, if he'd had more football. Uh, but equally, as I said, Nathan's come in and uh, done very, very well and he's adapting to the challenge very well. I heard you talk about the team selection, the changes that you made the other night kind of with a view to the players' workload and how many games they had or hadn't played. Is that a, a sort of bigger consideration? Do you look longer term at the kind of workload stuff and the physical stuff? And with a few games still to schedule, is that a little bit up in the air sometimes? 
I think the thing that we've found is I, I don't, as you know, I don't rotate as the modern world calls it. I don't do that for the sake of it. It's not really something I bother too much with. Um, there are times when you get a squad level where I think the squad is very, very tight now on who plays and who doesn't. Maybe in the past we've had some gaps where I think you know the the, the players who are playing have a kind of a slightly better version of what maybe is not playing. Whereas now I think we've got a squad that's really really tight, different skill sets, different type of players. So I think that gives you a bit more freedom to adapt and adjust. And sometimes, as I did the other night, for a bit of freshness. Now it didn't have as big an effect on the night as what I thought it might have because our stats were still very strong um, physically. Um, but you know, a couple of players coming back in would ask a lot of Corky coming out of a spell when he wasn't playing so often to play back to back games. Um, a lot of J Rod as well. Um, but he's been working ever so hard at his performances. So, you know, we do ask a lot of these players. So I think there's a time and a place when we felt it was right. As I said, didn't quite have as big an effect on the on the night because we de uh, delivered a very strong physical performance anyway. Um, but you do sometimes want that bit of freshness for the players. Uh, as far as the planning goes, the, the training schedules and, and the workload for the players and stuff, how far in advance are you able to look? Are you... Obviously not thinking about the details of games, but are you thinking two, three, four weeks in advance for, for kind of who needs to train and who needs to play and who needs to play for the under-23s and stuff? Well, performance-wise, it's the next game's most important, as you know, but beyond that, we still have to be mindful of what players need what game schedule. Do they need recovery games, as in been out injured? Do they Have they just not had a game for a while, so they've been fit, but they've been around the, the bench and they've been doing their extra bits of work, but still to keep their eye in and keep that real match fitness? Do they need that? Um, sometimes the, the prevention situation, like it's been difficult with Maxwell because he's come in and went away and hardly played or not as much as he would have liked, came back, few days off, then you've got to recover, you've got to come into a game schedule that's really crammed. Um, so trying to get him fit without putting him at risk. You know, there's a lot goes on. It's, it's sometimes, you know, the thing that fans don't see. And I always reference, you don't want fans to know everything. It'd make it too boring if they had a, a view of every detail. But the things you sometimes forget is there's a lot goes on into monitoring what the players are trying to do. There's a lot goes on to the physical work, workloads and the balance between that rest and well-being of the players. So there is a lot to it. And sometimes fans don't see that. They get frustrated because whatever player is playing um, or not playing as the case may be, we can, we can only get so much information out there. There's often a very good reason why that player's not playing. And sometimes it is to protect them and make them sharp and ready for whatever comes next. And, and it is a, it, there is a big juggling act and there is a big risk and reward. We've seen that over the last couple of seasons. We've had a pretty heavy um, injury situation. I think last year was slightly different. I think you know, but across the, across the whole of the Premier League, there was more injuries, more soft tissue injuries, mainly because we think, we all think because of the game schedule and odd timings of games. Um, this season is similar but different because we've had the COVID situation ourselves, we've had games called off and it just adds to the games that need to be slotted in. So there's a lot more to it than people think than just rolling out 11 players. There is a lot more to it uh, to make sure the 11 you are putting out are as ready as they possibly can be to go and perform at the highest level. Due to the FA Cup, your game with Southampton is going to have to be rescheduled. I think there's still a couple that have got to go back in that schedule. Does that uncertainty, does not quite knowing those things make the planning more difficult? I think it's, it's better to know sooner. Um, so we'd certainly be looking at that. But they do have to slot in. Don't forget, it's not just our games. They have to slot them in around, whether it's Champions League nights and you know FA Cup situation and all of that, uh, well, that being the Southampton situation. So it's not an easy situation for them. It's not always easy for us, but that's the challenge. You know, when these games are put in, we have to mould our, our thinking accordingly and get ready for what comes next. And then, as I said, still have an eye on a balanced view of their well-being and their, their ability to be as sharp as possible to play whatever game is uh, coming up. Uh, just on the Chelsea situation, obviously you've been involved in football a long time. You've been involved in a takeover at, at Burnley. You were kind of on the, the, the wrong end of a takeover at Watford. You ended up losing your job as a result of that. Just generally though, how easy or difficult is it to keep stuff that's not related to the pitch kind of away from preparations and conversations and the minds of people around the place? Well, in theory, it's simple because, you know, they're, they're, they're there to play football. They're contracted to play football. That's their profession. Um, they know what the challenge is. They know what's at stake. But of course, the, the, the modern game, there's so many out, outlets and so many media hits and so many media streams going into players and outside views and noise. 
you know, it's not always as easy. You know, you're trying to manage your team internally, of course, and what you do and all the planning, but sometimes there's lots of external um, messages and news and sometimes uh, individuals, sometimes just at collective moments. And so I think it's just changing. I mean, I do think the modern player is probably savvy enough to that because it's not like, well, unless you're, unless you're very young and you're new to it, most of the players know that, um, but it's still tricky. You know, there's a lot of voices, a lot of opinions going into players um, when you want them to just stay focused on what's right in front of them, which is usually the next game. Uh, and purely football-wise, if you can put in that performance and, and beat Tottenham a week or so ago, do you need to repeat that if you're going to beat Chelsea? I think you certainly need to play well against these sides. Um, I always say, you know, they might have a soft one. There might be decisions go your way. There certainly wasn't many of them the other night. Um, but yeah, they, you, you do need to perform well. In my experience, you need to perform very well to win against these teams and, and certainly good enough if you want to get um, a draw against these teams. So we, our players know that. We've got a pretty um, wise group. They know we'll have to be on uh, top of our performance to take these on. And you got a point at Stamford Bridge earlier in the season. How different are Chelsea, if different at all, compared to, to then now? Well, I was just saying there, there's been a bit of noise as if there's some kind of, um, not, not uh, what's the word, like just, just not as strong as they were. But at the end of the day, they've only lost one in 10. So, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a message in itself. They're still a very, very strong outfit. Um, maybe just not currently where Liverpool and Man City are and what they're delivering, but very, very strong. So, we, you know, we've got to be realistic with that. As I said, equally, we have found ways of operating against these teams and we're going to have to do that again.